once and future. And you knew that's where we were going, right, guys? You knew it. And normally, if you watch these uh, long-term plays, it's the AK, Mr. Bolo, long-term play of the week. And I go on my my whole rant. You know what? Not this week. Brian doesn't even know I'm doing this. I'm bringing Brian in on this one because <laughs> Brian deserves as much credit for this. Andy Tomberlin, shout out to you as well, my friend, because you know what? We talked about this book pre-FOC. We talked about this book in an interview with Arun Singh. We hammered this point home by cutting micro content. And Brian cut this excellent video that if you didn't want to sit and watch the whole Arun interview, which, again, by the way, guys, not enough of you watched. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, when you look at our hits on the channel, you guys are sleeping on these Indie Spotlight Series interviews. But you're getting spec gold, especially Arun. Arun is out here giving you bolo audibles, bolo audibles, as he calls them, where he's taken, he's taken over. He's not waiting for me to bolo a book. He's straight telling you what you should buy. We talk about follow the money, right? I, I say that. How often do I say that, Brian? All the time. All the time. He's the VP of marketing. He's telling you where the money is coming from, where it's going. He told you guys buy this book. He told you to buy this book before I was even familiar with what the hell this book was. When he originally brought this book up, it was just a name on a preview magazine to me. It, that's all it was. It wasn't anything that I sat there and was like, oh, man. The second he said that, because I respect him and his place in the industry this and who he is. And the fact that, by the way, guys, if pay attention to our Instagram this week. Brian Michael Bendis created a character yeah. based on him. <laughs> so obviously other people in the industry respect this guy. So the second he said, you know what? You need to be paying attention to this book. This is going to be a big book. And I know a lot of people may see that all oh, as salesman, right? Salesman tactic. But I know that's not what he's doing. He's in this thing for the long game. He ain't trying to take. He's trying to give. He gave information because he's a speculator. He's CBSI Nation. Right. He's Simpleman's Comics family. You know, he's not just some guy who's out there trying to sell books on the channel. Um, he didn't really care how many views yeah. that whole thing got. And the book kind of sold itself. I mean, who's the writer on the book? Right, Kieran, Kieran Gillen. Gillen right. What, book, what other book is Kieran Gillen writing right now that's gone to like 18th print for issue number one? And we're talking uh, about Die. Another book that we we hyped and told everybody to grab. Die. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, this is a book, Once in Future. We, we let you know during the interview, right? We put that out. We put the interview out. Like a third of the people that watch not even, maybe a fifth, I don't know, that watch this show on a weekly basis, watch that interview. We weren't satisfied with that, were we, Brian? No, no. So so we cut the micro content, right? Cut now, the micro people, content. And then more, what was the title of the micro content? Why you should pre-order Once in Future number one. Right, we, we're, we just, we put it out there. Now, what you guys may not know, because you may not see behind the scenes of the speculation community, right? There's other speculation entities there's other channels there's other speculation facebook pages um you know there's all kinds of people that you know talk about comics you know what they don't like they don't like pre-foc discussion do they brad yeah because you know we totally ruined the value on this book by putting this information out for foc i yeah, mean this book yeah. is doing horrible right now isn't it no yeah i mean just out uh, all you can do brian is double your money on cover a I mean, immediately, maybe even triple by the time this video goes live. Um, all you can do is have a thank you variant that we let you know about in advance. Um, that we that totally was blew out the print run on this. So much wow. so that we're going to fourth print. Fourth print. We told you guys the second print was going to be limited and that you better grab it pre-FOC. And it was gone like that. Um, same with the third print. We gave you guys cover art imaging on our Instagram. Again. People told us we should not talk about books pre-FOC because we're, what they're saying is that we're going to inflate the print run to the point that speculators can't make money. But here's the thing. First off, I've said this several times on this channel. We're not here to take from the community. We're here to give to the community. We're a part of the community. This, this is a symbiotic relationship between speculator, reseller, and collector. If we're just out here taking from the collector, right, then we're not we're we're not gonna have an industry for us to do what we want to do. That's why I don't like the guy who buys twenty copies off the shelf at his LCS. Instead, what that guy should have done is pre FOC 
order those copies from his LCS, make his LCS some money, make sure that there were still copies on the shelf for everyone else who slept on this book. And he still got to make his money. That's what I did. I know that's what Brian did. We pre-ordered this book because we saw it coming. Why? Because again, Arun told us. This is a guy who's as high up as it gets in a company. Let us know, oh man, this book is going to be big. This is going to be a big one. Uh, again, and you have the name recognition of Karen Gilliam and just, you know, a, a creator who's got heat behind them coming off Die, still working with Die, obviously, lots of option talk. And you know the way Hollywood works, right? When when one property gets popular, they start looking at those other properties. So Brian is even saying before show, I'm saying, man, I am i can't wait. I'm, this is a flip for me. Brian's sitting there like, oh, man, this is a long-term play for me. So, you know, here I am. I'm talking in the long-term play. And I was like, oh, man, I think I might flip some of these because I like the price. And, it, you know, Brian had to remind me like, oh, no, man, this is a long-term play. It's a great read. This was an exciting book to read. I enjoyed the first issue. Yeah, what we say uh, was like Indiana Jones meets Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. And it's, and it, it's a completely different book from Die, right? But it gave me that same kind of feeling of like, I don't know that this was a book that I would have grabbed initially, but man, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. This was a great read. Boom's on fire right now, by the way. Boom is putting out some serious hits. And uh, yeah, if you watch the, the Hot 10 show, the only Hot 10 show, there's lots of top 10s. Again, there's lots of top 10s out there, tons of top 10s. The only Hot 10 show is right here on the Civil Men's Comics YouTube show, channel. And we talked about that advanced retailer copy. That was the copy that got given out at San Diego Comic Con. Boom wanted people to read this book. Why, why do publishers do that? They do that because they're confident that if you read this book, you're going to love it. If it was a garbage book, guys, they're not giving it out for free. Imagine if they would have given this book out for free. Everybody read it and was like, this is terrible. The book would have been dead on arrival. That's why this book sold out. That's why the print run got bought up. It wasn't because me and Brian talked about it. I'm fairly confident not enough of you guys listen to us. That's that's I'm pretty confident of that. Now, the micro content video did better than the original video that we put out with Arun. And again, you guys need to stop sleeping. There's spec nuggets throughout each of Arun's interviews that we didn't cut in micro content that you need to go back and check out. Um, and at the same point, you know, we let you guys know this was going to be a hit. That thank you variant is one per store. If you watched Andy Tomberlin on the, of the Indie Spotlight series on last night's Hot and Cold show, he told you guys. He told you guys that, you know, or, or you know, this was one that was going to be doing numbers. Talk about a book doing sixty five dollars. You know, this it, it sold up the one copy at Midtown apparently for like two hundred dollars. I think this is the one per store variant is going to escalate in price. I think that the prices that it's going, it started to drop a little bit only because most people who are getting them from their LCS, they're flipping them. Yep. Because there's money to be made there. So then, so then the book drops a little bit. But when this gets optioned, notice I said when. When this gets optioned, what is going to happen to that cop, that one? The advanced retailer copy, again, another book where that prices keep rising on that one, don't they, Brian? Yeah, and I won't even say when it gets optioned. Those people putting them up on eBay right now, when those issues dry up and issues two, yeah. three, four, and five, and that first art comes out and it starts building that storyline and that story keeps getting better, without even the option news, the buzz for the book is going to increase the price for that thank you variant that's no longer available on eBay. Right, exactly. And that thing is, it, every one that gets purchased at this point on eBay, it, it's just being taken off the market. Yeah. It's being bought by somebody who's buying it to hold. So you're seeing the dwindling number of those books available. Um, yeah, Brian and I believe in talking about comic books pre-FOC. Why? Because the strength of our industry is built upon the ability for LCSs to make money. And in, we're talking about independent comics, guys. Marvel and DC, they don't need our help. They, they don't need us to sell their books pre-FOC. If you really go back and look at our history, Brian, have we really – I can't think of one Marvel or DC book we've ever talked about pre-FOC. We talk about indie books because they need that help. And we don't – we're not pumping for Boom. We're not pumping for Source Point Press or Mad Cave or anything else. When you hear us talk about a book, it's a book Brian and I either are genuinely interested in reading. We got an advanced copy and we read it and loved it. Or it's a book that one of us or both of us are sitting here going, this is a spec play. Yeah. 
And if you really think we're inflating the market that much, I want to say thank you for giving us that much credit because I don't you see know, it. I tell you, I tell you what, if you think we're inflating the market that much, I'm looking right at you in this camera. Arun Singh and Ross Ritchie, CEO of Boom, hire us. We need to have jobs in if we're the ones who sold this book. And then you're not giving these the great and talented team over at Boom Studios enough credit. Yeah. They don't, this is not on us. This is on them. The, the one thing we will take credit for is we gave our Simpleman's Comics family this information. We pass this information on to you. We say we are transparent. That is exactly what we are. If we believe in something, we're going to talk about it. Brian and I aren't always right. We're, we're, but I tell you what, we've been right pretty often with these independent comics releases lately. Uh, we, we told you about Canto. A lot of people laughed at us about Canto. We were absolutely right. Once in future, I think this got ignored a little bit. You know why I think it got no, ignored, Brad? I think because we, you know, we had a rune on twice. I think because we talked about Power Rangers. I think people looked at him and were like, ah, oh, those guys just like Boom. And Buffy and Angel. Right. So, but you know, but here's the thing, guys. If we were right about this, maybe we're right about Power Rangers. Maybe we're right about Buffy and Angel. Maybe you should be checking these series out. I think Boom is on fire right now. Um, we just talked about it last week, right? Uh, someone is killing the children. Yeah. Something That's is killing the, the children, yeah. Something is killing the children. Brian and I both read that book already. I think you're going to have another once in future on your hand. I kind of believe that. And you can either listen to us now and go ahead and secure your copies. Or you can miss out and be, you know, waiting on that third and fourth print or maybe maybe later print. FOC has passed on that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So you can't kill us for that one. But I think we did put that information out early before yeah. FOC. You know, I, again, and as soon as we know about something, as soon as we believe on something in something, this is our platform, right? Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. Yeah, we're CBSI. But this is our platform. This is where we get to talk about what we believe in. And we believed in these books. So we talk about them. And, uh, you know, they, it's great to see good books by good people doing well. And uh, the thank you variant or you know, the uh, uh, advanced copy was on the hot 10 list last week. I would not be surprised to see it or that thank you variant on the hot 10 this week. I don't write that list. I don't see that list till it's time to record. I don't see that list till way late in the night on Thursday night. So I have no ability to tell you what's on that list or I'm just prog prognosticating here based on what these sales are. This was the spec winner of the day. This was the one that everybody was trying to get. This was the one that we saw pictures the most being posted of either pickups, people being excited to see this book on the shelf. A lot of you LCS owners put this as like your spotlight pick, your pick of the week, your you know manager's pick. People were on this book. People saw it. This was one, don't sleep on these long-term plays. But like, kind of like Brian had to kind of get on me and remind me, hey, this one, don't burn and turn this one. Don't, why am I going to take a $4 book and flip it for 15 bucks and make 11 bucks and pay fees out of that when there's some long-term money to be made here? Now, if you've got that advanced retailer copy, you can make some money on that sucker. So I, I don't blame you if you're dropping that thing on eBay for like 170 which the last sale I saw on eBay was like 199 buy it now type deal. So, you know, if you're doing that, I can't, I can't fault you for that. But, right. you know, those cover A's, you might want to hold those ones long term. Yeah, because there's even stories of people reserving a copy of cover A, getting there, and the LCS owner going, my bad, I sold your shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, we hear about that every time a book gets hot, right? <coughs> every time a book gets hot. You run into those issues, right? You run into those issues with LCSs. And Brian knows I'm not a big pull list fan because there's no contract between you and the retailer. There's no way for you to, like, for sure secure your copy. We saw that picture of the girl sitting there all sad with, you know, the, the LCS employee with all of – or owner, I don't know actually who. I don't want to, like, disrespect her. But she had the stack of comics that weren't picked up. I sit there and go, that's that's the pull list situation. Unfortunately, there's no contract between retailer and customer. Either side can get screwed in that relationship. Right. So I'm a big advocate of pre-order. Put your pre-order in, pay your money, lock in your copies, uh, you know, make sure. You're also going to get the biggest discount that way. 
But yeah, I'll tell you this. We are going to continue to talk about books we believe in, whether it's pre-FOC, whether it's post-FOC, no matter what. Shout out to Karen Gillan putting out another hit. Shout out to Arun Singh. And Dan Mora. And Dan Mora. Dan Mora, again. Dan Mora, who is Power Ranger artist, who has put out incredible Power Ranger variants, and who put out incredible artwork on this book. Shout out to Arun Singh, who Bolo audibled this book, hijacked this show to be like, we need to talk about this book. He was so excited. Shout out to him. I know he's pumped for these sales. And it's not over, guys. That second print is going to be a heater. Yeah. I'm just telling you that right now. Super allocated. Yes, super allocated. A lot of people, we've heard that a lot of people that have tried to get on top and order those second prints, uh, Diamond was like, "Uh uh-uh, sorry, you're getting this many. And then the rest of yours is going to third print, which is now being pushed to fourth print. Right, tiny window. You had a very tiny window. You could not, what a lot of people do is they wait till this book comes out and they're like, okay, now I see the heat on this book. So now I'll go run and grab that second print. Nah, it's too late. If you didn't, you know, you're going to you're gonna have to have a relationship with your LCS at this point to grab that second print. Third print, I think that's going to be not as tough as the second print, but still very tough. Fourth print will probably be the print where you'll see the largest print run. Not larger than, say, the first print, but maybe – because that's the one that, you know, the readers are going to get. The readers who want that copy. Um, but yeah, shout out to Arun Singh. Shout out to Ross Ritchie, Boom CEO. I know he's probably having a good day today seeing the success of this book. So, yeah, man, these guys these guys killed it. Um, this, is a, this is a big one. Uh, was it Something is Killing the Children? Yeah. Don't sleep on that. Don't I get that? I keep calling it someone is killing the children. Yeah, that's James Tenney the fourth, and we all know he's good at writing stories. Right, and he wrote a here for Boom years ago, The Woods. If you haven't read The Woods, I love that series. Uh, that was one that was supposed to be optioned. I don't know whatever happened with that, but you know, James Tenney the fourth. It was like all those all those books, like right? The Woods, The Trees. Yeah, <laughs> like all getting optioned around the same time. Yeah, around the same time, you get that Hollywood confusion going. But yeah, James Tinian the Fourth, he he can do those dark stories. He can do th- that kind of stuff. Um, that book, I you know, I said I almost cursed when, uh, you know, that book is messed up. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that's going to be the next big boom book. And uh, you know, booms booms on a streak. So don't be surprised if you don't see Boom Studios create their own properties on the hot and cold list. Some point in the near future, but this is. <laughs>